You eat when we say you eat. You shit when we say you shit, and you piss when we say you piss. You got that, you maggot dick motherfucker! Can a film which is rated R for a host of obscenities, produced by a cast and crew of non-believers, and which paints the only Christian as an evil hypocrite, be, in fact, the greatest Christian movie ever made? Put your trust in the Lord. Your ass belongs to me. Welcome to Shawshank. The Shawshank Redemption is one of Hollywood's most beloved films. According to public voting on IMDb, it ranks just above The Godfather in the number one spot. People are drawn to this film for its message of hope and enduring friendship. I am warning you, Dufresne, turn that off! Which remarkably come together in a Christian act of redemption. On tier two cell 245. When Andy Dufresne escapes after two hours of screen time, 19 oh years in the story, it hits as a total twist. He was in his cell and lights out. Stands a reason he'd still be here in the morning. There's no quintessential lead up or execution he of a must plan. He said something. Also, Martin. Not a word. Andy just disappears. Lord, it's a miracle. Man up and vanished like a fart in the wind. I wonder if you might get me a rock hammer. Given that escapes what? are endemic to prison films, viewers might have expected what is it. it and why? Rock hammer but the Shawshank Redemption, in a sleight of hand, Looks turns like attention elsewhere. Contrary to every expectation, the prisoners of Shawshank fear release. While they may hate the walls of the prison, they're not seeking to escape from them either. What the hell did you do to set them off anyway? I didn't do nothing. I come in here to say fairly well. And you heard his parole come through. This is embodied in Brooks. After being locked up for 50 years, Brooks responds to his parole by attempting to kill a friend, just so he can stay behind bars. But I'm telling you, these walls are funny. First you hate them, enough time passes, you get so you depend on them. For Brooks, freedom is an exile to a world he doesn't belong. So when he ultimately finds himself in that exile, empty and alone, he sees no other option but to hang himself. This is the principal problem for the prisoners of Shawshank, and yet not for Andy Dufresne. Andy comes to Shawshank as the innocent outsider and refuses to give up hope. He subverts the prison's dehumanizing system of rules and regulations, extending to his fellow prisoners rare and extraordinary reminders of the outside world. Cold beer after a hot day's work, angelic music over the prison speakers, new books to educate men. Andy's strength derives from his innocence, but when at last, the warden erases evidence of his innocence, Andy appears to succumb to the same institutional pessimism of his fellow prisoners. Andy come down to the loading dock today. He asked me for a length of rope. Remember Brooks Hatlin? No. And he'd never do that. I don't know. He returns to his cell and there appears to hang himself. That's when the unexpected occurs. You better be sick or dead in there, I shit you not! You hear me? Instead of finding Andy dead, the cell is empty. Oh my holy God. Now stop and think about that. If you thought this film was just another prison flick, take another look. The film infuses Andy's escape with the symbolism of new birth. It proceeds through a woman's womb and ends with him slipping head first from the other end. This symbolism fits within the film's larger allegory. Prisoners enter Shawshank like newborns, naked and coated in white. They march you in naked as the day you were born. And they come to fear release with life's corresponding dread of death. In his escape, Andy is born again right and becomes a new man. A man nobody ever laid eyes on before. He appropriates the identity Strolled and wealth which viewers thought bank. was set aside for the warden. Until that moment, he didn't exist. I hope you'll enjoy living abroad. Thank you. And in taking on this new persona, Andy passes judgment on the warden and his hypocritical system. In the end, the warden performs on himself the fate that only moments before the viewers assumed would be Andy's end. Now look at the empty cell again. It's an allusion to the empty tomb. Oh my holy God. Andy's escape is an echo of Jesus' resurrection. 
But this alone isn't what makes Shawshank the greatest Christian movie ever. It's beyond the illusion where Shawshank touches people in a way that gospel films don't. Rather than ending with a resurrection, Shawshank goes on to show why it matters. It's not by accident that Andy, the only innocent man in Shawshank, becomes the best friend of Red, the only guilty man. It's Red and not Andy who needs to be redeemed. Murder. Same as you. Innocent. Only guilty man in Shawshank. Red, like Brooks, is institutionalized. In three parole hearings so at the zero, beginning, middle, and end, the film demonstrates back. Red's transformation. You feel you've been rehabilitated? Oh, yes, sir. Without a doubt. And I can honestly say I'm a changed man. No danger to society here. In his second, God's he admits true. to no longer being a danger to society, not because he is a better man, but because, like Brooks, he no longer looks forward to the outside world. But it's Andy's miraculous escape and his life on the outside which redeems Red. You feel you've been rehabilitated? Well, now, let me see. You know, I don't have any idea what that means. Well, it means you're ready to rejoin society. I know what you think. In his final hearing, Red at last speaks as a free man. He no longer cares whether he remains or goes, whether he lives or dies. The world outside no longer concerns him. Because Andy lives, Red can face what the future holds. So when his time of release does come, it's hope in Andy which propels him beyond Brooks' fate to a life in a world beyond Shawshank. Is it obvious now why Red finds Andy working the wood of a fishing boat, all before an eternal sea? The Shawshank Redemption is a parable, and like the parables of Jesus, it's seed which opens in the right soil.